Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie. Your go-to source for all things electric vehicles is, of course, the Out of Spec podcast. So thank you for joining me today. And today on this episode, we are delving into some developments, potential developments, really, in the EV charging market. BP is an oil giant eyeing Tesla's supercharger sites in the U.S. This comes hot on the heels of some major layoffs in Tesla's company, in the company Tesla, specifically their charging division, and a reported slowdown in new charger installations from the company. Let's plug in. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. According to a recent Bloomberg article, BP has interest in acquiring Tesla supercharger sites as a strategic move to expand their footprint in the EV charging market for their BP Pulse network. That's what they call it. Bum, 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 bum. A large part of the Tesla supercharger team, like I said, was laid off. We covered this in previous podcasts, and it make, made a ton of headlines because a ton of people in a very significant team in a company of the EV charging world were laid off. And people were really curious what was going to happen next without these folks in charge of the most ubiquitous and reliable EV charging network in the U.S., especially after announcements of the standard J3400 or the North American Charging Standard was announced where automakers are adopting that technology into their EVs and the Tesla Supercharger Network is opening up to other automakers and other EVs to charge on their network in the future. After this, an email did go out to site managers Uh, which we talked about in another earlier podcast as well, where these folks were told not to break any ground on any new sites. So because of this, there may be sites that are still unfinished, partly finished, where energy providers have made large investments to be ready for fast charging installations, but not being able to carry on with this project due to the fact that Tesla wants to focus on their existing charging network to make it more reliable, to improve it, perhaps to upgrade it instead of going forward with a ton of new sites. So this was an unexpected decision that perhaps leaves a lot of potential on the table for other charge point operators to step in and take advantage. Real estate owners had been promised supercharger installations on their sites, and this is a great amenity to have. In a lot of cases, people sitting on your site for an extended period of time, a new market, uh, folks to visit your property. So they might be open to other providers now. We saw the company Revel announce that they were looking into the same kind of idea of taking advantage of these sites that are now apparently not being used by Tesla for new supercharger sites. So this announcement or this news is not BP's first foray into the world of electric vehicles, of course. In fact, they have been making pretty significant strides in this area. Just last year, they announced a $100 million deal order for Tesla's superchargers, their ultra-fast chargers, because Tesla announced back then that they were selling their hardware, charging for their chargers. So BP Pulse or BP has made it clear that they have a commitment to bolstering the EV charging network that they have. And let's not forget, by the way, that BP is obviously a global oil giant. You probably remember the BP oil spill of 2010. More than 200 million gallons of crude oil was pumped into the Gulf of Mexico for 87 days. People lost their lives, of course, during the explosion. It was the biggest oil spill in U.S. history. 16,000 total miles of coastline have been affected, including coasts of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. And eventually, after the legal proceedings that, of course, took place after this horrible event, there was a global resolution of civil claims worth $20.8 billion. It is the largest settlement with a single entity in the department's history. Pretty crazy. So it makes me wonder about the presence of oil giants in the EV charging arena. While BP wasn't required to invest into EV 
EV charging infrastructure, quite like what we saw with the Volkswagen diesel gate scandal and the resulting Electrify America and Electrify Canada EV charging network, et cetera. It is an interesting question to ask how oil giants all over the world are going to play in this space, how they are, are moving, have moved, and will move into the world of electrification. In addition to expanding their charging infrastructure, BP is also focusing on the experience for EV drivers, of course, who isn't? Their EV charging network will have an app, a range of services from at-home charging solutions to the public charging to fulfill the needs of EV drivers everywhere. That's their goal, of course. Their chief executive officer of BP Pulse Americas said in an interview with Bloomberg that if there are stranded real estate partners who are looking for someone to call, they should feel free to pick up the phone and call me or look me up on LinkedIn. Sujay Sharma is his name if you're interested. So with BP's extensive investment and experience in the EV charging market, their interest in Tesla supercharger sites could potentially start to reshape the landscape of EV infrastructure. BP also has their Giga Hub in Houston, Texas. So this is their milestone in the U.S., the BP Pulse headquarters showcasing, you know, their dedication to getting EV charging infrastructure in the ground in this country. It features a massive solar canopy and 24 DC fast charging points, but these are tritium, 150 kilowatt DC fast chargers to be specific. Like I said, they have the BP Pulse app. You can see real-time availability and locate the site, of course, and then also connect to Wi-Fi. So the Giga Hub is equipped with a lounge area, restrooms and amenities. So it'll be interesting to see, okay, is this what they continue with, this kind of experience? But typically when we see these charging sites at headquarters, they're, they're a bit nicer. They've got a bigger budget for those sites than what they will put out uh, along corridors and in places where people need to charge their EVs. EP Pulse wants to continue to span, expand its network by installing more chargers in areas with high demand like airports, large cities, and properties owned by BP throughout the U.S. But of course, now it might be other sites where Tesla supercharger sites were going to be. They also have grant funding from the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, NEVI, and the California Energy Commission, CEC programs. So these funds, of course, are kind of a plenty, and they will support the establishment of BP's charging infrastructure at various sites. They noted California, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky as a few. This opens up the broader conversation, in my opinion, to all of these sites to serve as potential for other charge point operators. With the recent interest from companies like Revel and BP in acquiring Tesla supercharger sites, it makes me ask, okay, how will the bidding for these sites go? Who will obtain them? Is it just a price point? Who else is involved in the decision? Certainly the site hosts. And I want to know what your thoughts are on the potential trend of other charge point operators and even oil giants like BP venturing into the EV charging market and not just purchasing supercharger sites, but how are they going to expand the EV charging network in general, globally, nationally? Another question I had was that with BP's significant investment in EV charging infrastructure, do you think that this is going to pose a significant challenge to Tesla's dominance in the market? You know, is there going to be more and more competition as Tesla focuses on just improving the network that they have rather than expanding it as rapidly as they were? Who do you think is the best runner up? We know that Tesla is pretty far ahead because they've been doing it for a long time and they figured out how to do it well. I believe that wraps up today's episode, looking at BP's interest in the Tesla supercharging sites. I wonder who will be next, publicly coming out saying, hey, call me, I want your sites. So we'll keep an eye on what happens and see what Tesla does as well. Thank you for tuning into the Out of Spec podcast, y'all. Don't forget to join us next time for more electrifying insights. And if you enjoyed this episode, like it, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, share it with a friend. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.